Hey, Bill and Brian, how are you guys today? Good we are afternoon. doing great. Fantastic. It's so exciting to have you guys here. A fun fact, you guys are the very first all-male duo that we've had. We had one other episode in our 200-plus library, and it happened to be two females that ran their marketing company in D.C. So now we have two guys that are here with us. So you guys kind of get that, like, you know, that first time award. So welcome. We're so glad that you're here. Happy to represent. So we're going to be talking today about where are your people and then once you kind of really hone in on that, then having the ability to be able to market to them with the power of video. And so I would love to just kind of kick off our conversation today. I'm going to kind of go to you first, Bill, and ask you, share with us, like, you know, what is that big mistake when you just look across the board, maybe their clients or just what you see in the space of marketing? what people are doing wrong when they're ultimately just really trying to figure out where their audience even is online. Yeah, I, th I think one of the things that, that people do right off the bat is try to put one message on all platforms. Um, mm. You know, so you have to, you know, not only separate the demographics, you know, like by age group or by whatever, you know, how, however you figure out your demographics, um, but you have to understand what people's behaviors are on these different platforms that you're speaking on. So if you're on LinkedIn, LinkedIn is a business platform. People are used to doing business. They're used to talking about business topics, but Facebook is social and you've got to be social on Facebook. You've got to, um, you know, you've got to figure out if you're, if your crowd is on Facebook, you've got to uh, reach them in an emotional way. You've got to tell a story about people, um, you know, that type of thing. Instagram is visual and you've got to have something beautiful on Instagram to, to, you know, fit what you're trying to say. And so, and then we've been experimenting with TikTok a lot over the last year, obviously Brian and I aren't dancing or anything at, yet. No. Yeah. They, yeah. They, they may get us dancing at some point, but, but, you know, we're, we're working on a campaign right now where we're trying to reach 18 to 24 year olds. And uh, you know, we, we can't think of any better way of doing that than, um, than TikTok. And so, you know, it's not always age group and age group is a simplification, you know, but we're, um, we just are trying to follow the eyeballs and understand where people are. So what do you think about that, Brian? Is there any like separate issue that you think as it relates to kind of like where people are missing the mark? Not really. I mean, I think when people miss the mark, I think it's more of an internal thing that they don't really know who their audience is in some cases. We talk to a lot of clients and we ask them, who, who are you trying to connect with? Who's your audience? And they kind of give you a blank stare and then they say everybody, but it, it's not really everybody. And even Bill and I, we struggle with that as well, which is who's our audience? Who do we want to connect with the most and target those people with our own marketing? Um, but really being able to narrow it down and really define who your audience is, uh, is step number one. Um, you know, yes, social media has all the different platforms and audiences and where you want to connect and what people in that audience want to consume and how they consume it. Uh, but in reality, I think most people fail because they don't know who their true audience really is. And I think so, clients a lot of times come to us and say millennials, or they say, you know, they either sub subdivide by age group or they subdivide by some arbitrary uh, indication that really doesn't tell us anything, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to reach Gen Z or millennials, that's just an age group and they're all different. And you have to, you have to introduce those things like psychographics in there. How do they think? What are they, what's important to them? What problems do they have? And, and that will tell you, kind of, that will kind of guide you to, to what story to tell, but also where to tell it. No, I think that's really important. I mean, you could, you could look at all of us and, you know, maybe we are 
fit within like a 15 year age range. We all live in South Carolina, but yet the three of us all might have a lot of different thoughts and views and very different um, ideas on what would make a good fit for us if we were looking for a product or a service or an offer. So when we think of that business owner or that organization that's with us today listening or watching this, and they're saying, okay, I hear you, Bill and Brian, I know that this is important. You know, what are some of those steps? If I, if we're going to hone in specifically on social, I know that a lot of people like to say, okay, how old is your audience? Okay, this is the platform to go to, but would you have maybe like some top tips or suggestions on that um, organization really being able to say like which platform, if we were going to only focus on one or two, where might that um, be, or what should we take into consideration as we make that decision? Right. Well, I think, I think one of the ways uh, we could look at it is say Instagram, for example, if your company is selling a specific product, fashion, uh, something that can be bought at a store, Instagram is definitely the way to do it because they have their system set up where you can just see a product, click on the product, buy the product, and you're barely even leaving the Instagram realm, right? You're still scrolling. You're still in that frame of mind. I mean, I don't know how many pairs of shoes I get served up on Instagram and I don't even buy the shoes, but I'd like looking at them. Right. So if you have a product, Instagram is definitely the platform that you need to be on to connect with that audience and find that audience and sell that specific product grills, uh, shoes. I mean, for ladies, it's probably, you know, makeup and, uh, other types of products that women tend to deal with. Um, at the same time, if you are a, uh, a company that is providing a service, educational videos are a great way to express your expertise. So they could be, you know, 15 second TikToks to, you know, two or three minute long YouTube videos as well. So, um, I think that then we look at the type of products that you're trying to sell or the service you're selling to find out where that audience is going to consume that content. And let's say you're not a, let's say you're not a company, you know, maybe it's a, a church or a social group or a, you know, sports team or so, you know, those types of things go very well long form on Facebook. Mm -hmm. you, can tell, you can tell longer stories on Facebook, but also <clears throat> let's say you're a church, you know, one of the things you want to do on Facebook is you want to have a group. You want to have, you know, uh, where you organize all your people together and then you can give them the information in that in that group that they need. Um, and, and this applies to just about any social situation, you know, whether maybe you're not selling a product, maybe you have a nonprofit, maybe you're trying to, um, you know, forward a cause or, you know, any of that kind of stuff. Facebook is a very long form social platform where you can. Uh, you can really expand on things and get detailed and you can get connected and, and be granular. It, Instagram is much more visual. It's much more, you know, surface and, you know, uh, that, that kind of, there's not a lot of like um, options for you to, to be able to share. And then you've got very limited um, analytics and insights on, on Instagram. So it just really depends on, you know, what you're doing. We believe that TikTok is probably the, um, most underutilized platform right now. And if we can, if some, you know, whoever figures out how to, to crack that is ahead of the curve. And at some point, some massive company is going to buy TikTok and ruin it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we just need to figure out how to get clients to utilize TikTok properly before it gets ruined because there's tons of eyeballs on there. Absolutely. Well, I know that this is like a loaded question because when I think of you all in your area of expertise with your company as told by, I think of amazing storytellers through the power of video. And right. so when we think of finding our ideal people, you know, you know, Brian, you were mentioning a product, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of some of my, even some of my skincare clients, right? We're using Instagram, we are getting traction, but they are not, of course, the only skincare company. So when you guys think of video 
and trying to tell stories and trying to get companies that want to embrace this, but they're just kind of like, okay, how do we up level or how do we actually begin to do video in a way that to your point, Brian, I'm sorry, Bill, you mentioned that if someone's not seeing the video, it's like useless, right? right. So how do we begin to, especially to organizations that the idea of video feels very new or very uncomfortable, or they just don't even know where to begin. What might you say to, to wanting to, to be able to stand out online using that video? Well, I mean, the, the, the truth of the matter is in 2021, it's the decision making about that is over, right? You've got to do it. Yes. It's, yeah. It's really what ends up happening is if somebody comes to you, your website, your social, whatever it happens to be, and there are no videos there, they're going to wonder why, what are you hiding? What do you, you know, what do you not want to tell people, you know, about yourself? And so it, the decision-making about that is, is, is basically over. And now what you have to decide is, do you want to show up well, you know, do you want to authentically represent yourself and have people connect to you? Because, you know, even Brian and I, you know, where we could serve, we could serve a lot of different clients. We don't want to connect to people who don't resonate with the idea of being authentic and telling your story. And so, um, you know, we, even we're trying to, to understand <coughs> how to reach the people that really want it, uh, you know, to be right. And sometimes you want a place marker and sometimes you need it to be right. And so I think as far as what to do, what to tell the story about, you need to talk about why, what, what, what connects you to the work you're doing? What, what effect do you feel like you're having in the world? Even if you're selling skincare, you know, I mean, say even, I mean, but if, you know, like, let's, if you have a nonprofit where you serve people and you help people who can't help themselves and you, you have a belief in a cause and all of those things are pretty easy to tell. If you're doing skincare, there's still a reason why you're connected to it. There's a reason why you're connected to it. And the same reason you're connected to it is probably a, a reason someone else, a potential client would be connected to it. And so um, I think that's what, where you have to start is, is why does this matter? And what difference am I going to make in the lives of people, even skincare, you know, even, even like I use skincare, right. You know, but like, it's important that we understand that no matter what you're doing, you're, you're making a difference in people's lives. And it's important to communicate that message, not, yeah. what, not what you do, not what you do, but why you do it and what effect it has. Good. So, so that leads me to say, you know, we've, we've kind of developed five types of videos that every organization needs. And then it's a good jumping off point because what it allows you to do is then create a massive archive of footage and it allows you to have uh, macro content that can be whittled down into micro content because if you have a brand film if you have frequently asked questions if you have testimonials if you have um, an educational series if you have uh, you know videos that are describing your mission in your organization then you can take those and really make them small, granular things and messaging that you can get out there. Because the key to being effective on social media at this point is rising above the noise. And the only way you can do that is through a true commitment to frequency and volume. You have to be putting out something every day. And if you can commit to that, you'll eventually rise above all the other comp competitors and rise above the noise and you'll get noticed that way. But it, it's really hard to do that and really stay committed. But if you can build up enough content through the basic things that you need to have on a regular basis and on your website, it makes it a whole lot easier. I can't agree with you more because I find that there are some people that really embrace social media, even if it's not like maybe their personality style to, to share a lot of things or to maybe be more personal and draw some of those personal stories in. But I think one of the big mistakes I see from a social end is that so many businesses are just trying to check a box to be like, 
X, Y, and Z number of posts have gone out this week and no one's checking to go, oh, has anyone like asked us questions? Are our DMs filled? And they, they don't want to hear that answer of you should be truly showing up, making content, getting it out there every day for that consistency piece. But also to realize that it's like a powerful connection that you've got with potential customers and just your audience for visibility purposes. And let's, it's a great resource to take advantage of. And I think just some people have that wrong mindset and they think of it more as, as a burden. Or a billboard. You know? <laughs> or, or a digital cork board and billboard. Yes. Not a, it's not a billboard, you know, so uh, you can't, it's, you're not going to engage people with look at me, look at me, look at me. Um, you know, you've got to, you've got to connect to them in a way to say, let's talk about you for a minute, you know, and, uh, and, 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 and all, all we're, all we're doing is, is trying to be problem solvers for people, right. And trying to help them help understand what kind of uh, information we can get out, what kind of problems we can help people solve. And, um, it's not really about us at all. It's about them. Right. No, absolutely. But, yeah. So I could, I know that y'all could talk about video marketing for hours and I know I can not because I geek out on this subject, but what I would love to do is um, as we're wrapping up today, I want to be able to guide people to you all to be able to come to say, hey, these are video marketing storyteller experts. And so take a second, tell everybody where they could come and connect with you guys on social and then tell everybody just a little bit more about what it might look like to just to come find out more about your company. Sure. Um, I'll start if you don't mind, Brian. Oh, uh, I figured you would. <laughs> <laughs> we have a dynamic. We have a dynamic, Heather. Um, I so I've been on uh, LinkedIn a lot lately. I've been trying to to get um, a lot more comfortable with LinkedIn. So you can find us at uh, as told by agency on LinkedIn, and I'm on LinkedIn as Bill Grant. So you know, add me. Um, and I'm 47, so I'm still on Facebook a good bit. Um, and, um, you know, we're, um, we're trying to utilize TikTok as much as possible everywhere we are, we're at, at, as told by agency. So that's our, uh, pretty much consistent social media across the board. And then the website is as told by agency.com. Um, and Brian, I, I think, you know, the question about what, what is that like to, to get started doing this? That's a good question for you. Yeah, well, we really love to dive in with a creative meeting and just kind of see where you're at. Like Bill said, we're, we're problem solvers. We are the, uh, the secret weapon to all the marketing agency or marketing directors and communication directors out there. We want to kind of fill in and support those gaps that uh, marketing directors and communication directors need help with and just find out more about the organization and what they're looking to accomplish their goals and try to craft something that and strategize with them in order to create the content they need and reach the audience. Awesome. Very cool. Well, we want to make sure that we can make this as easy as possible for you guys to be able to connect with Bill and Brian. So we're going to have all the links that they have mentioned, as well as how you can go and connect with them on their website um, on today's show notes. So you can head to sweetteasocialmarketing.com forward slash episode 219, and you'll be able to find the show notes and all those links. So you can go and be social because we advocate that, right? So you can stay connected. Um, we'd love for you even to sna snap a photo, snap a video, what you're doing while you're listening. And we'd love to know any takeaways that you have from today's episode. Now, Bill and Brian, I know that you're kind of new here on the podcast, but we end each and every episode with a rapid fire round. No preparation is necessary. You just say the very first thing that comes to mind, and this is painless. Do you think you can handle this? I'm on it. Okay. We can do it. We can do it. Bill's going to go first. And then Brian is going to immediately answer with his own personal answer. Okay. Question number one, beach or mountains? Mountains. Beach. London or Vancouver? Never London. been to either. <laughs> London. Okay. okay. Favorite productivity tool? Oh, notepad. My iPhone. 
Name one person that you would think who has helped you get where you are in your career today over the last five years. Brian. Oh, well, now I feel Bill. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I thought you were going to say Brian. <laughs> okay, last question. One thing you love to do when you are not working. Mountain biking. Play with my kids. Awesome. You guys succeeded. You passed with flying colors. Thank you so much for being here on the podcast. Um, everybody have a super fantastic, amazing day. Come and connect with us. Make sure you can subscribe if you haven't already. And we look forward to seeing you on an upcoming episode. We'll see you later. Mm -hmm.